So you've decided to develop criteria to help you choose the types of videos you wish to create and acquire the necessary resources. While criteria can help us make decisions, a knowledge of what good video consists of and a clear understanding of what the goals are behind our media creation help us determine what kind of technology and supporting elements we should be considering. UBC Wiki's Design Principles for Multimedia provides a useful and evidence-based design framework for considering these issues. In particular, it highlights the work of Dr. Robert Talbert in his use of screencasts, where he applies the practical design goals of keeping it simple by focusing on one idea at a time, keeping it short with videos that are five to six minutes in length to maintain a tension span, keeping it real by taking into account how students best learn and process knowledge, and by keeping it good producing the best possible videos with the resources that are available. However, the last element of keeping video good can be somewhat nebulous and encompasses a wide range of elements. Part of it is technical and relates to the overall quality of the audio and video. Other elements relate to the content, both in how it is organized and how it's presented. Jack Kumi, in his book, Designing Video and Multimedia for Open and Flexible Learning, addresses many of these content elements by synthesizing common communication and pedagogical tools with media screenwriting to develop a useful framework for effective and pedagogically oriented video and media narratives. At the fundamental level, the principles identified by Kuomi include identifying how the video will be used, including target audiences, learning content, and the overall teaching purpose. This in turn informs the screenwriting process, such as the use of hooks to capture the attention of the audience. Combining these different elements and sources, we can develop our own personal definition of what good educational video is.